Hi there, if it's your first time here, my name is Olivia and I like sharing my experience at two well-known fashion schools and if you do know me, I'm guessing it's because you found uh, my portfolio videos, uh, my portfolio advice videos based on my experience at St. Joseph Martins. But since I'm making more sewing tutorials lately, I thought I should talk about Bunka Fashion College, which is where I got my foundation in pattern cutting and sewing. And I uh, also got really solid knowledge of like textile technology, quality control, and some other like really technical <laughs> subjects. Um, I already wrote about Bunka, so uh, it's in my blog and I'll leave the links in uh, the description of the video, uh, among other stuff. So I hope this won't be too repetitive, but um, yeah, the good thing about making this video is that I can also show some of my textbooks. So it will be just two of them because the rest are back in Brazil. So let's begin. About the school and how to apply. So what's the deal with Bunker Fashion College and how do you get into it? From the top of my head, the two names that always come to me are Yoji Yamamoto and Junya Watanabe. I, uh, I have the impression that Issei Miyake attended Bunka. I'm not sure. And upon further Googling, I found out that Jun Takahashi from Undercover uh, also attended Bunker Fashion College and uh, it's also worth mentioning another thing those three people, three designers have in common is Rei Kawakubo, the legendary founder of Comme des Garçons, who did not attend Bunker, by the way. So uh, with that in mind, you'd assume that, uh, that Bunker Fashion College is the place to be if you like Japanese avant-garde fashion, uh, not quite, or at least not back in my day. I sound old, <laughs> and uh, not in the course that I did, which was the two-year garment creation course. So, a um, few important remarks here. So, um, one bunker does have like a, a bunch of different courses. So maybe there's one more suited to you, your interests and your career goals, perhaps. And two, maybe Bunka has good connections with these good brands like Calm, Yoji, Undercover. Um, so uh, it's worth studying there, I can't tell you. Uh, and three, you could say like, oh, it's Japan. It's just uh, worth the experience of working in Japan because Japan is cool and has a lot of cool stuff. Well, that definitely living in, and studying in Tokyo is, uh, is a really cool experience um, if you can do that. But my point here is that you have to figure that out by yourself. But um, you'll be lucky to find someone that's available to talk to you about their experience, maybe guide you through your application and do all that in English. So step zero is learn Japanese, like really learn Japanese. Don't do like me. Don't just get enough of a lower intermediate level to get by and read your textbooks, really, really, really become fluent. So, um, you know, you can read magazines, so you can speak casual Japanese with your friends and very formal Japanese with um, your teachers and possible mentors. And yeah, if you, if you want to stay there, you should also know enough Japanese that you can write professional emails, like work emails in the future. And important to say, don't count on the international office. I have no idea what they did over there. Um, they were probably more involved in PR. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they were just a bunch of like paper pushes. And um, this is actually a tip 
that applies to uh, a lot of schools. International offices do not know enough about the courses that you may want to apply. They are there for the school as a business and not for you as a prospective student. Now, how to apply? I'm not going to check the current information. I'm so sorry. I can't. Damn it. Stop making noise. I'm not going to double check the current information on the website. I have not read or spoken Japanese in a really long time and I'm lazy right now. Um, I remember I had to have a guarantor back in Japan apply for me since there wasn't a, um, an international office back in Brazil, my home country. I don't know if these procedures have changed, but to be honest, I, I mean, I kind of want to believe that the whole, I need to have a, a local guarantor to apply for me thing. I think that wasn't really necessary, but uh, yeah, nobody bothered to guide me otherwise even though I tried to the best of my Japanese speaking abilities at the time. Application was around October, November, and then we, there was an entrance exam, an interview in December, maybe like mid-December, and that was all the way back at the Tokyo campus. And the entrance exam was like just a, a language exam, and the interview was also pretty chill, so I think it's just to see like if you're le you are a legit candidate who can speak a good enough level of Japanese and maybe they also want to have a look at you and kind of see like if you if it looks like you would be a good student. And then I received news about my application like I received my admission letter over snail mail like paper mail coming all the way from Japan to Brazil um, but I uh, was only officially that's still true I'm pretty sure you only be officially admitted if you can submit proof of language proficiency like uh, for me it was the JLPT level 2 certificates which I remember I sent over fax like even again back in my day um, if nobody used the fax machine anymore so Japan has these weird quirks you would imagine that is the most technological society but I was receiving stuff over snail mail and submitting documents with uh, the fax machine Coming back to the language requirements thing, what I recommend people who come ask me um, about Bunka is, you know, you're already <laughs> embarking on a pretty big adventure going all the way to Tokyo to study. Um, if you're like Western uh, native English speaker, for example. Um, so I, I recommend you do you go to Japan earlier and do the one of the six month Japanese courses and um, you can even do the one at uh, Bunka Language Institute, Bunka Institute of Language, yeah, B-I-L. Finishing one of those six month course was enough to satisfy the language requirements so uh, you just had to pass the exam and the interview and uh, it's definitely easier to learn Japanese in Japan and I think like even if you're studying like five hours a day that still leaves enough time to do a part-time and that should help with living costs. Curriculum and textbooks. So looking back at all the subjects I took it's amazing how much you can learn in two years and I think this has a lot to do with how structured everything is at Bunka. Like you sit in a classroom with 50 or 60 uh, other students and you have a Bunka textbook for every single subject. I was going to curse, I didn't. 
and you follow them during class with teachers that are very acquainted with this material and very skilled at making practical demonstrations so you can later go and apply the, the new knowledge and skills on your own, be it drafting patterns, applying different sewing techniques, doing basic tie-dye, analyzing fabrics to assess thread counts, composition, etc. All that you are going to learn there is covered by the textbooks and the classes, and then you have homework and exams to make sure you learned everything properly, just like in high school. So the downside is it, it, it got incredibly boring at times. Uh, ooh, diva. Uh, but the upside is that I never had to guess how to make things because all the instructions were given like nothing was obvious. And this was years before I learned about like learning disabilities or being neurodivergent. So I think it's, it's really admirable that they would make this sort of teaching material from the principle that things are not obvious if you don't explain them. And things that are obvious to one person may not be obvious to another. So when in doubt, just take it very step by step and add pictures for everything. To this day, I can review stuff in my textbooks, like for example, to uh, when I decided to make this jacket. And um, yeah, complicated skill such as dressmaking did not feel too much like a steep learning curve. It happened quite naturally because I followed the program and I applied myself. That said, of course, that would not be a, an environment that would encourage you to uh, do your own research and potentially stretch yourself too far outside the scope of what was being taught at any given module. And uh, it's also not a place that will foster creative experimentation, aka risk-taking, as they say at uh, an arts and design school. So, you know, you could very well be a good student with good grades, but finish the course and realize like, oops, I don't actually feel like a fashion designer because I have ideas and I know brands, but I just don't seem to be able to connect the dots and create original designs. And um, is that bad? Not really, actually. Um, you know, a lot of the work in fashion is copying. But again, you need to assess what you want to do and then what brands, what companies will value and pay for the skill set you're bringing to the table. Oh, one last thing um, on the section. We had a lot of busy work to do, but computer work was kind of frowned upon. I could get away with writing reports on the computer because Japanese was not my first language. So people like the teachers just assumed like, oh, let the foreigner write in Japanese using the computer is all too much for her. Um, but um, there were times when, for example, my head teacher insisted that we draw the step-by-step -step of sewing our garments. Otherwise, we'd get like maximum uh, C or C plus or something. But, you know, that was pretty much what was already in the freaking textbooks. So, uh, why? It's like a timeout or a punishment for a naughty child, school child. Or another example, I learned how to make a tech pack, which is a, a really important document in um, apparel manufacturing. But I learned how to make it by hand, and it's fine. That's useful as an in-house document. If you like, but if you're working in a in a small brand, um, and you're 
outsourcing all the sampling and cutting and making, it's just better to do it digitally. Um, but yeah, if you can do stuff by hand, you can then go and apply the same skills and knowledge to Adobe Illustrator or CorelDRAW. Working in Japan. Hard work never killed anyone. Nobody wants to work anymore. Man. Right, Boomer. Yeah, that's how the world still operates. Except they do be dying of overwork in Japan. It's called Kadoshi. And luckily, people are catching up to the facts that going the extra mile in your job is great for the company, but that doesn't necessarily reward you. And in fashion specifically, an intern or an assistant with this kind of mindset is every up and coming designer's dream because that's gonna be the employee that will be really easy to exploit, to give new urgent tasks at 9 p.m. on a Thursday. Uh, and uh, yeah, that will be the, a great employee to scapegoat when things go wrong. But coming back to Japan's case, I can't tell you if the stereotypes about Japanese work culture are true or not. You can have a look at Reddit's um, Life in Japan subreddit, because it's in English. But again, learn Japanese so you can talk uh, with people and read the, the local publications. Now, a good thing about Bunka, like, yay Bunka, they did teach us how to write a CV, Japanese style, which is by hand, like you had to write by hand. Again, weird fascination with the, the writing stuff by hand. Uh, and uh, it's landscape format. Instead of being this, it's a CV like this. And I think your picture goes here. I think in, like, at least here in Europe, it's, um, I don't think it's illegal, but they try to avoid the picture thing for uh, discrimination reasons. And, um, and the Japanese CV, you're supposed to write quite a bit about yourself. And there was even a section to write your strengths and your weaknesses. Um, and the teachers also taught us how to dress and present ourselves appropriately for interviews and that meant that that was the time when the teachers got very conservative not to say something else and uh, they just enjoyed telling students to dye their hair black again career prospects elsewhere so bunka is well known enough but not enough for you to rely on the school's reputation to carry your career. And uh, the same thing I said about the international offices, not knowing about the courses, is true for recruiters who may receive your CV. In the end, you have to be smart about keywords and how you present your competences as a potential job candidate. But I think it's, that's an area that most schools are not doing much about. So thank God for the internet. Again, thank God for Reddit. Uh, and uh, you can also learn a lot for free by following some career coaches on LinkedIn. Um, though, yeah, follow a, a few different ones because LinkedIn is also becoming kind of weird. Um, and I also like the automated CV scanner at resumeworded.com. As for portfolio, uh, it's great that at Bunka you don't need to make a portfolio to apply. It's a, a vocational school. They're expecting you to arrive fresh and green. Um, but they also don't really teach you how to make one. I had lots of homework. I had uh, like I had stacks of papers, like homework and reports that went with each garment that I made. But as I said, a lot of it was just busy work. And um, this is where the creative risk taking 
would have come in handy. Like, do I risk getting lower grades so I can use my time elsewhere? Or do I do the task, but I make it my own and spend time finding my own system, my own way to present my process? But yeah, I mean, who's going to teach me that? I think it's not fair to uh, put this pressure on myself, like in hindsight, um, and expect me to take risks when I had no guidance and no supports to do so. So in conclusion, Bunker Fashion College is a great school if you're looking for a good technical foundation and you know you would benefit from a very structured curriculum. But if you're looking at me to make this decision for you, I'd rather turn the question back to you and invite you to do some soul searching because it's not like I can give you long-term career advice just like this. Um, the job market just keeps getting more and more complex and the fashion industry has its quirks and it's got a lot of unspoken rules. So, you know, I think that would be really irresponsible for me to give you career advice general career advice on YouTube and uh, I didn't even get to tuition fees, living costs, visas, immigration, la la la. Um, it's probably not illegal to give out financial or immigration advice on YouTube, at least not like general advice, but I find it really unethical. Anyway, it's been a really long road for me and uh, I spent a lot of time barking up all the wrong trees so if you're like if you're watching this and you're like 17 18 ish I really hope that you uh, can talk about these things with your parents your family I hope you have supportive teachers that are genuinely interested in you and your future and uh, if you're looking for extra support from me, please check out my mentorship sessions in the link in the description. And I'll see you next time. Bye.